and welcome to EC Electronics. Today's class, we are going to discuss the very famous Kirchhoff's Voltage Law. Kirchhoff's Voltage Law. It is also called Kirchhoff's Loop Law or Kirchhoff's Second Law. So, this is the very famous law in network analysis. So, it states that the algebraic sum of all the branch voltages around any closed loop in the network is zero at all instant of time. That is, if you take the sum of all voltages present inside a closed loop in, in a network at any instant of time, the sum of these voltages, that is the algebraic sum of these voltages will be equal to zero. That is the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So, uh, let us examine how this uh, law is applicable in network analysis. So let's see how the Kirchhoff voltage law is applicable for this closed loop. So, this loop consists of a voltage source Vs, three impedances with value Z1, Z2, Z3. This can be anything, resistor, inductance or capacitor. So we have already discussed about the elements present in an electrical network. So if you don't know about the type of elements present in an electrical network, just watch that video. I'll share the uh, link in my description box. Okay, so here uh, there are uh, three elements present. The voltages across the elements are V1, V2 and V3. So there is a voltage source which is Vs. So uh, let us consider how the uh, KVL or Kirchhoff voltage law is applicable in this closed loop. So I am going to consider uh, the, the total algebraic sum of voltages. So before considering the algebraic sum, you have to follow the sign conventions which is using in the KVL. So if you are uh, going from the negative side of the voltage source or negative terminal to positive terminal you have to take the sign of the voltage as from negative to positive the sign is positive and if you are considering from positive to negative and if, if you are going in this direction then you have to take the voltage as negative so i'll write it here that is the sign convention the sign convention is if you are going from positive to negative that is equal to negative sign okay that is if you are going from positive to negative that is if you are traveling in this direction then this voltage is taken as negative that is positive to negative you have to take negative sign again if you are going from negative to positive then the sign is positive sign. So, this is your sign convention. That is, if you are going from positive side to negative side or positive terminal to negative terminal, you have to take the voltage as negative and if you are going from negative to positive, you have to take the voltage as positive. You have to consider it as a positive voltage. So, then only you have to, then, I mean, then only you can take the algebraic sum correctly. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to travel in this direction. Okay, so let this point be A, this point be B. First, I'm traveling from A to B. So while traveling from A to B, I came across with this voltage source, which is Vs. So here I'm traveling from negative to positive terminal of the battery or the voltage source. So here I, I can take this Vs as positive. Okay, so I'll write it here. So Vs. Okay, now, now I'm going from B, I'm going to take this point as C. Okay, so from B to C, I have this element, which is having a voltage of V1. So I'm traveling from positive to negative. So from positive to negative, see the sign convention here, positive to negative, the sign is negative. So you have to take this V1 as minus V1. So you are taking this V1 as minus V1. Now, I'm traveling from B, sorry, I'm traveling from C to D. So from C to B, there's another voltage that is across this Z2. There is V2 and here again, I'm traveling from positive to negative. So the voltage is again negative, so minus V2. Now, coming back in the direction. So here I'm traveling in this direction, right? So from D, again, I'm taking another point. Okay, let's take A. So from D to A, there is only 
is at 3, the element is is at 3 and the voltage across this is at 3 is V3. So since I am travelling from positive to negative side, the voltage is again negative, that is minus V3. So this is the sum total of the voltages, right? So there is no other voltages present. So you can write this equal to 0 according to the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So you can write Vs minus V1 minus V2 minus V3 equal to 0 according to KVL for this particular network. Also, you can write Vs equal to taking these voltages to the other side. V1 plus V2 plus V3. Right. Also, you know that voltage equal to energy by charge. So, we have discussed about voltage, current and power in our earlier video. So, if you want to know about voltage, uh, power and current, just watch that video. I will also share that link in my description box. Okay. So, uh, you can write this as in terms of energy by charge because you know voltage equal to voltage equal to energy by charge. So how can you write this Vs? Vs is equal to Es by Qs that is energy by charge equal to V1 you can write as E1 by Q1 plus E2 by Q2 plus E3 by Q3. So this is in terms of energy by charge or in general you can write energy supplied equal to equal to energy consumed okay so this thing also you can conclude that is energy conservation is correct according to the kvl that is here the energy is supplied by the source obviously because there is only one source here that is the vs and all the three other elements are consuming energy right so the source is providing energy and the other elements in the loop is consuming energy. So according to this KVL, we get we got Vs equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3 or you can write Es by Qs equal to E1 by Q1 plus E2 by Q2 plus E3 by Q3. That is the energy supplied by this source equal to the energy consumed by these three elements. So here the law of energy conservation is correct or is preserved. Okay, so that is the Kirchhoff's voltage law. Let's do a example, a simple example of a type of problems coming from KVL or Kirchhoff voltage law. So here, there's a closed loop. There are three resistors. There are three voltage sources. So you have to find the current or I present in the closed loop. Okay, so first we'll write the KVL or the voltage equation for this closed loop. So going to travel in this direction so from negative to positive you can write 6 okay the voltage value is given 6 so 6 so here I'm taking this as positive and this negative so I'm also considering the voltage across this 5 ohm as V1 so you can write it as minus V1 so first you don't know the values uh, the, the voltage is across the 5 ohm, 10 ohm and the 15 ohm. Okay, so I'm going to consider this is V1, this is V2 and this is V3. Okay, so I'm taking this, uh, I mean, this is positive and this is negative. That is, I'm traveling in this direction. So, the voltage V1 is negative. Okay, so across this 10 ohm, again, I'm going to take positive and negative. So, it is minus V2. And coming here, that is I'm traveling in this direction, right? Okay, so considering this voltage source, the value is 2 volt. So I'm traveling from positive to negative. So it is a minus 2 volt, minus 2. Then for this voltage source, again I'm traveling from positive to negative. That is minus 1 volt. Then for this, okay, so this is a, I'm traveling in this direction, right? So this voltage is also negative. So minus V3 equal to 0. So this is your voltage equation according to the Kirchhoff voltage law. Okay, once again I'll explain. So first considering this voltage source, here I'm traveling from negative uh, side to positive. That is negative terminal to positive terminal. I'm taking this 
6 volt is positive according to the sign convention. Then the three voltages I have named as V1, V2 and V3 across this three resistors. So V1 is from positive to negative it is negative. V2 again it is negative. Then considering this voltage source from positive side to negative side or from positive terminal to negative terminal. So the voltage is negative. Same the case for this voltage source it is also minus 1 volt and also this V3 is minus V3. So your equation is 6 minus V1 minus V2 minus 2 minus 1 minus V3 equal to 0. Now uh, simplifying this 6 minus 2 minus 1 that is 3. 3 minus V1 minus V2 minus V3 equal to 0. Okay you can write 3 equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Okay mark this as equation 1. Again I don't know the values of V1, V2 and V3. Okay I can consider the current in the network is I. So what will be the value of V1 here? You know according to Ohm's law what is voltage according to Ohm's law voltage is equal to V equal to I into R that is V equal to I into R according to Ohm's law. So what is the voltage across this 5 ohm resistor? You know the R is 5 and you know the value of current we have taken as I. So you can write V1 is V1 equal to 5i. Correct. Now, considering V2, the value of R is 10. So, V2 you can write as V2 equal to 10i and V3. V3 equal to the value of resistor is 15. So, it is 15i. You have taken the value of current as i and you have substituted the values of resistors are 5, 10 and 15. So, you got V1, V2 and V3 are 5, 5i, 10i and 15i. So, substituting the values in the equation number 1, you will get 3 equal to 5i plus 10i plus 15i. Okay. So, what is this? 5 plus 10 is 15. Plus 15 is 30. So, you can write, I will write it, I'll write it here, 3 equal to 30i. Or you can write i equal to 1 by 10 ampere. So, you will get the value of current in this closed loop is 1 by 10 ampere. So, you have simplified this network and you have obtained the value of current by uh, using the KVL or Kirchhoff voltage. So, Kirchhoff voltage law is a very famous law and a very much of applicable law in network analysis. You can use it for simplifying uh, networks, very complex networks and find the value of current voltage etc. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you gain some knowledge from this video, please try to spread this knowledge with your friends also. Please share this video with your friends and family. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you.